Welcome back to Little Stickers, baby. I'm Michael fucking Rainey, here with Jean-Benet Dolcalo. Hey, everybody. The name's John Dolcalo. Jacob from Matera. Hey, hey. Danny Dubs. Man, we just had a really beautiful celebration of the Murdoch family <laughs> on Patreon. <laughs> In my eyes, I wouldn't call myself a celebrator of it. I think I I damned them all to hell. We were blowing kisses my... at the end. That's not a celebration. You were. Yeah, you we... were going nuts. Oh, uh, you were catching kisses. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from this distance, it's hard to miss them. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet of you. <laughs> I didn't mean it to be. Jake, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. You look good. Thank, if that's thank you. You're you more. Do. Of... I like your look. Oh, yeah, you do look good. It. You look like you're you're wrestling troubled youth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah, I don't know what to say. That I was absolutely uh, just wrestling some uh, some of the kids outside. You know, <laughs> don't, don't uh, can we start over? No, well, they that were was trying good. to steal your car. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you you beat them with the catalytic converter. They were trying to steal. <laughs> That's right. Totally justified. Jake. Thank you. Appreciate that, John. I saw you without your pants on a little while ago. Yeah, I had to take my under skivvies off. It was a little cold out there today, but it is cold, but it's not cold enough in here. It's heating up in here. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, shit. <laughs> We were talking all kinds of oh nasty God. stuff. I just saw a spark. You guys are doing that. <laughs> yeah, I felt it. Yeah? Yep. I smelled it. Jake, I can't believe you sit next to this every fucking week. <laughs> <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck is that supposed to mean? <laughs> no, it was nice. John, you haven't won a coin toss yet. I've I've proposed something to you. Which I'm stunned you haven't taken me up on. I wanted to do an Impractical Jokers watch along with you if you win the coin toss one week and you didn't take me up on that. What gives? Well, that just seems like... Um, Fun? Seems like you'd be letting me win and I want to win on my own terms. It would only happen if you won the coin toss, oh. but I would like to watch Jokers with you. We'll do the movie one day for a movie review. All right. Or a movie watch along. All right. But um, That'll be fun. Maybe eventually we'll do episodes. No mayor episode? You don't want to cover that? Um... I suppose we could, but it's all up to... Uh, look, I, I'm the movie guy, so I can decide that we're watching the movie, right? Okay, all right I have yeah. the power to do that? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Other than that, when I win the coin toss, I'm just going to put it on. I've seen the fucking show. <laughs> I'm going to give a dissertation about the fellas. God okay, damn. I would like that. Yeah, that's all what right. happens when I win. Can you all give right. a dissertation? People work on dissertations for years, right? You think that me being a fan since 2020 isn't years? It's I don't think on. that's enough. It's going on three years. I don't think that's enough. How I long think, is an MBA? How long is a fucking? Uh, I think it takes longer to a write graduate a program. Yeah, man. You think it takes longer? Yeah. No, you just because it took you seven years to graduate. Gra <laughs> <laughs> I would have fried your fucking ass. <laughs> yes, you would. I would have fried your ass yeah. hard. God damn it. Yeah. Fucker. That's, um, yeah. I'm flipping the fucking coin. <laughs> yes. How long did it take you to granulate, sugar? <laughs> <laughs> Please let us know. <laughs> Fuck, now I'm going to have to take my sweatshirt off because you're heating me up with that one. I'm seeing stars. Fuck. <laughs> I need to start enunciating better. Here we go. Tonight's Wouldn't it be nice tonight. if somebody else was working your tongue? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> we did it again, Jake. Woo! Look at that. It would be nice if somebody else was working my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> I do be feeling like that. And anytime I try moving my lips... I feel like my tongue's like, mm mm mm. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. Oh, my God. And then I got to play catch up. And then oftentimes I'm just tripping all over my damn mouth. Uh huh. I'll be doing that sometimes too. Yeah. 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 yeah this is definitely like a, uh, a unqualified hire versus what's going on in here. Mm hmm. Yes. It's so good that we all podcast together. <laughs> <laughs> Three yeah. marble mouth motherfuckers. <laughs> Yeah, God forbid we get fucking data entry jobs together. <laughs> <laughs> the marble men. <laughs> but here we are. And here we go. <laughs> Brothers, you aren't going to believe this fucking retard we have tonight. And I feel like I can say that every week. But this guy really put a smile on my face. That's nice. Uh, well, he did some really awful things. Oh. Oh, he also God did some it. really funny things. What he do, Mike? This gentleman I'm referring to, Jacob is named Haddon Clark, the pride of Troy, New York. It's a solid yeah. name. It is, Haddon yeah. Clark. Mm -hmm. It's like a superhero name, you know? Yeah. He he came from, well, I shouldn't say he came from good parents. He came from parents who, on the surface, seemed to be... Calm and ready. What did you say, calm and ready? Mm -hmm. What's that? Oh, calm and ready. Mm -hmm. uh, mouth. Lose mom's, yourself. mom's spaghetti. Okay. He said, on the surface, he they looked, and I... 
comment. It's a lyric from the song. I, I think we should have like a box that he sits in. <laughs> a and dunk now tank? We, we allow him to talk from. <laughs> yeah. Jake, only, only when we're ready. I agree. All right. Can you please put that glove on so we can keep moving? But his parents, his dad was a pretty wealthy guy. He was a chemical engineer. His father was also named Haddon. He was Haddon, Haddon Sr. His mother was named Flavia. <laughs> now, for a woman who's named after an artificial sweetener, she was not very sweet. <laughs> pretty bad people. That sucks. It is. They were both brutal fucking alcoholics, Jake. What year was he born? 1952. Okay. It's a good time for alcoholism. For sure. I mean, I feel like it was the end of an era where it was more acceptable mm -hmm. than it is today. You come home, your slippers are ready for you. You got a nice drink waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Flavia was a stay-at-home mom, so I guarantee yeah. you she had that shit ready. Her dad made, her husband made good coin. What time do you think she started? Three in the afternoon, four in the afternoon, or was she a nooner? Ooh, that's a great question. I don't know what kind of hours chemical engineers keep. He was partially responsible for inventing saran wrap. Huh. Came out of Troy, New York. I had no idea. Wow. He was one of the guys that had a hand in its development. I don't think he's the guy that got credited with it, but without him, we'd be putting T-shirts over our fucking Tupperware like dickheads. <laughs> Tinfoil still exists. John. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I got T-shirt money, all right? <laughs> Let's just say that. I, I don't want to rub it in your face, but. Good for you. Let's just say I, I got <clears throat> T-shirts I don't even wear. Whoa. Yep. I come into them, Jake. Ah, uh, my God! I do have a bunch of T-shirts that I just come into. And then no, you what do don't. you do with? I do. I wash them. And then you never put them on your body. No, I don't. He donates them to Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about tissues? Why? Why shirts? I, be, because I, I like to lay it on the bed, skeet into them. Are you standing up? Yeah. Oh, man, you this is getting weirder. Beat and weirder. upright. Yeah. I jerk oh. off in stirrups. <laughs> I thought you meant the baseball socks. <laughs> <laughs> Play ball! <laughs> Unfortunately, the batter is up. <laughs> but, yeah, his parents, they're fucking brutal, man. And unfortunately for him, they get very funny when they drink. They have very specific names for Haddon when they drink. That's now, funny. He's a problem child. He's clearly fucked up from birth. His mother thinks he's fucked up from a bad forceps delivery. Wow. Wow. Is it head shape related? Is his head fucked up too? He acts like somebody who had weird fucked up head stuff happen. Uh -huh. Shaped like a Crown Royal bottle. <laughs> <laughs> he's always wearing that purple hat. <laughs> his mother calls him, gets drunk and calls him Kristen. Oh, no. Damn. They wanted a girl. They got a boy. His father gets drunk and calls him the retard. Damn, dude. <sighs> Here comes Kristen the retard. <laughs> so they were Wanting big... us to read him a bedtime story. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> big proponents of gentle parenting, I see. <laughs> this is rough. He's one of four, and his older brother, Bradfield, is a little stinker his damn self. In 1984, Bradfield was arrested for killing and dismembering a co-worker, oh. a married co-worker, oh. who he invited over for dinner. He invited her husband as well. He didn't come. But the woman came over, he beat her, he strangled her, and he chopped her up and he barbecued her body. Holy crap. Cut that's her up. just a brother. Cut her up into 11 pieces. And that's his older brother. Oh, my God. Could you imagine the regret of declining that invitation after that? <laughs> Do you think she Yowser. didn't tell the husband? you think she was going for an affair? I don't know. It was a very strange situation. That is a weird thing. You're like, okay, my husband's not coming, but I'll still come over to your house for dinner. Very strange. Yeah. I would kill my wife if she did that. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, yeah. I would kill her after she was already killed. Yeah, yeah. If she got, if she went over somebody else, somebody else's I house even, for another man's house for dinner, <laughs> and she got killed by him, I'd yeah. kill that bitch. I wouldn't I even balance out the plate. Mm -mm. No I, veggies, brother. I would refry that bitch's beans. <laughs> <laughs> so this poor kid's got a fucked up life. His brother's just as nutty as he is, and when you see them both, they both look insane. So God knows what the fuck was going on in that house. One funny fucked up thing that Haddon would do. He was teased a lot as a child for looking like he did and you would assume that a child is teased when his parents refer to him as Kristen and the retard. Damn. A way that he would get... It sounds like a like a late 80s punk band. 
Kristen the retard. <laughs> yeah. That is, yeah, it is. Yeah, I was gonna say another morning show. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Kristen and the retard. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving away Duran Duran tickets at the top of the eight o'clock hour. I'm hungry for chicken. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to hell. I'm sorry. I am sorry. Don't be sorry, man, because I'm going to tell you some pretty awful things. I'm sorry. Yeah. So when kids would pick on him in the neighborhood, what do you think he would do to get back at these kids? In the 60s, I'm betting he lit some neighborhood pets on fire. Whoa. Jacob? I was something flame, something that's on fire. You were thinking well, yeah. matches or, or yeah. yeah, flame broiling yeah. those pets? Yeah. No, he would kidnap them and he would cut their heads off. The pets. Yes. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah. I was halfway there. You were close, man. Yeah, I was really close. You Jeez. are good at this. I am getting uh, disturbingly good at this. Have you ever thought about becoming a detec detective? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. I changed my Twitter handle to Style Tips like three months ago, and I still haven't put out a Style Tip, so I don't think I'm going to be a detective anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> You're already doing the work. The Style Tips or the Detective Tips? Jesus fucking Christ, man. <laughs> Damn. So he created the first Chia Pets. <laughs> and then what, what happens after that? So, Jake, this dumb motherfucker. So he's cutting off the heads of pets, people who bully him. Mm -hmm. He's wearing girls' clothing. Okay. Because his parents dress him like that? He eventually likes it. Okay. And as he gets older, he prefers to be referred to as Kristen when he wears women's clothes. Wow. Okay. So the mom was calling him Kristen out of endearment or like a... A mean thing. I think to be mean. Okay. Because she wanted a daughter. Yeah. and She did want a daughter, and I, I think she, she hated thing. him for being so fucked up. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. But Mike said it. They did funny things when they were drunk, and that is, <laughs> except for the retard thing. It's a pretty funny, quirky thing to get drunk and be like, yeah, fucking Kristen. <laughs> to your son. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did they beat him as well? Did they beat the kids at all, or was it all yeah, verbal? They were just, yeah, okay. they were. So it wasn't always a fun drunk. No, it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> he failed two grades, and he didn't graduate high school until he was 21, Jake. Whoa. You can identify with that, right? Yeah, you know it. Yeah. Dude, yeah. imagine being able to buy beer on the way to your own graduation. <laughs> <laughs> so after he graduates, he is able to get into the Culinary Institute of America. This is 1974. The CIA, how impressive. <laughs> <laughs> the other CIA. The CIA yeah. for fucking <laughs> retard addicts. You need clearance just to access the fucking strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> he, get, he gets in a lot of trouble, though. He gets in trouble for pissing in mashed potatoes. Oh, my God. Hmm. Jesus Christ, man. I, when you gotta go, you gotta that, go. I know, man. And plus, people be yelling at you in the kitchen. Yeah, that should be a commandment, though. You don't piss in the mess. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So eventually, he goes on to have numerous culinary jobs. And Jake, he doesn't last long at many of them because he gets, he gets caught stealing. He Ooh. gets caught doing crazy shit, John. All kinds of wild shit that would get you fired. Now, All in restaurants around uh, upstate New York area? No, that's a great point. I'm glad you mentioned that. So... He travels around a bit, and his grandfather has a place on Cape Cod. Oh. So he heads up to New England, and he gets a job in a kitchen on Cape Cod. Wow. And during the time where he's up there, there are a number of weird murders. Okay? And one of them we're going to get to after we're done all this, because it's a pretty nutty story to go along with. And he's potentially... He's potentially involved yeah. in this, yeah. Wow. Nothing's ever tied him to it, but considering what he ends up doing, it does fit with his M.O., Mm -hmm. And he is nutty enough to do the job. Beyond the um, the the blatant uh, disrespect of pissing in the food, yes, you don't is, do it. Is he a decent chef if he's getting all these jobs or cook? <laughs> he's still alive, so we could find out. All right, yeah, yeah. have him cook us something up. <laughs> Can I just say you don't piss in Bob Evans, or you don't go to heaven? Was that an audible groan from the producer? Oh, my God. I think, I think he's hungry. I think I heard his no. stomach growl talking about mashed potatoes. What we were all thinking. Nope. <laughs> and, Jake, please stop playing with your penis through that little I'm fucking... I'm sorry. I that hoodie hold hole. I've, I'm just nonstop coming, guys. It's, it's all coming here. Jake, you're going to hate this. In 1982, our dear friend Haddon Clark joins the Navy. Mm. Something admirable. An admirable admiral. <laughs> <laughs> Man, <laughs> woo, baby, the lights were flashing on that one. 
I'm like, we're gonna throw in Louise on the way home, buddy. Your fucking tongue got shipwrecked on that, dude. <laughs> Probably all the steam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe this is a good podcast. <laughs> I think this might be the best podcast. Yeah, we're doing it, baby. Yeah. Look at us. <laughs> aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> Couple of rear admirals. <laughs> <laughs> but Jake, he gets in trouble in the Navy. What do you think he gets in trouble for? Oh, man. Probably something with mashed potatoes. <laughs> no, he no. gets in trouble for wearing frilly women's underwear under his Navy uniform. <laughs> <laughs> I I would have thought that was standard issue for sailors. <laughs> <laughs> they fucking hate him, dude. He gets beat up pretty often. Wow. Yeah. That sucks. It does. And in 1985, he's eventually discharged. While he's in the Navy, he gets diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia. And problems related to that diagnosis are, are ultimately what lead to his discharge. So he's in his 30s when he, he joins the Navy. He is. And before I go further answering that, Jake, what normally leads to your discharge? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't want to say, Mike. I've, I've struck out enough tonight. <laughs> yeah, um, he's 33, John. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Did you want to add something about your discharge? No, Jake? no, I don't. You sure? Yeah, I'm positive. I'd mm-hmm. like to add something about discharge. I, uh, I, I didn't uh, turn off uh, ABC quickly enough after Jeopardy, so mm-hmm. I happened to catch some of Wheel of Fortune. I don't normally watch it, <laughs> <laughs> but the guy in the beginning when they're doing the intros uh-huh. with a big smile on his face talks about getting uh, honorably discharged from the fucking <laughs> army. <laughs> <laughs> and Matt Sashek's just like, all right, <laughs> let's go on to the next person. <laughs> all right, so he's dicking around at this point. So he's trying to find odd jobs. And Jake, uh, unfortunately, in 1986, now he's discharged from the Navy in 1985. In 1986, his younger brother, Jeff, takes him in. Is the murderer. That no. Oh, okay. That's the older brother, okay. Bradfield. Okay. Jeff is the younger brother. He's got a sister as well. Okay. But his younger brother, Jeff, takes him in, and this is in Silver Spring, Maryland. Not too far. No, it's, it's really not. Yeah. It's a couple hours away from here. And the thing that really wears out his welcome with his brother, Jeff, who has a wife and kids, mm. is that Haddon will jerk off in front of the family. Jesus Christ. He will. Haddon. He will. Hadn't a good time. Oh, man. <laughs> Hadn't a good ass time. Fool me once, Haddon. God damn. You're just but mad. beat off in front of my children every day for Dude. three months in a row. Dude. Yeah, family's just in the living room watching Dirty Dancing and they just look over. <laughs> yeah. So, um, ooh, I love this part. I'm sorry, Jake. John. Now, this is fucked up. Um, there's an inciting incident which sends him over the edge, Jake. It's a very funny incident. Oh, no. His niece calls him a retard. She is six. Damn. Getting fried by the six-year-old. Damn. Do you know how big of a retard you got to be to get called a retard by a six-year-old, Jake? (laughs) I mean... Pretty big, because I have been. (laughs) Have you, Mike? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. That's all right. What did you say to her to make her say that? I played the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> this is recent oh wow okay yeah I, I drove by school with the little stickers blasting and an entire chorus of fucking kindergartens were like who are those retards <laughs> I was like little stinkers bitch act like you know there goes the retard mobile <laughs> driven by the fattest gayest retard alright that's all. too much please <laughs> I'm gonna get into something really sad right now Okay, so he goes ballistic when he hears this. I'm imagining he does. He does. So his brother tells him to get the rest of his shit out of his house. The brother, the wife, and the kids are out of the house during this time. So he's there during a weekday, and um, he's outside with his truck, just fucking thinking about getting called a retard by his niece. Two doors down, there's another six year old girl that lives there. It's this little girl named Michelle Door. Her dad has her for the weekend. The dad's in the midst of like a, a vicious custody battle. Damn. So the dad has her for for this time period. And um, he's got a little pool out back for her. And he tells the kid to, you know, go outside. You can play in the pool. She gets bored with the pool. So she wants to go two doors down to knock up for a friend. So she leaves the pool without the dad knowing it. 
she walks down in this house and this fucking dickhead's there and she asks for a friend and he says, yeah, she's inside. He lures her up to the niece's bedroom and he kills her. He slashes her and he cuts her throat so severely it almost decapitates her. Jesus fucking Christ. Yep. And then after he kills her, he puts her body in a duffel bag. He leaves the house and uh, puts the duffel bag in the car, goes back in and cleans up all the blood that was on the niece's floor. I have no idea how he was able to clean up all this blood yeah, to that's the point. Crazy. I don't know that they didn't, that the brother didn't know the extent of something happening there. But there was no sign of it when they got back? That's what he says. And please, please seem to verify this. That's crazy. So the dad is watching a fucking NASCAR race. And after a while, the dad's like, all right, let me go check. She's not out back. He's like, all right, she probably went two doors down. He goes two doors down. At this point, the fucking, um, his brother Jeff is home and he's out back barbecuing. And he's like, yeah, I haven't seen her all day. Fucking Haddon had left. Haddon went to work. He worked at the Chevy Chase Country Club. <laughs> Chevy Chase is a real place in Maryland. I know it is. It's a real damn bank, too. Yeah. <laughs> About to get run on. <laughs> so the dad's going nuts now because he doesn't know where the little girl is. Yeah. All right. So Haddon's at work at this point. He had cleaned up what had happened with the murder. Yeah. So all the mess that he made with the murder. And at this point, nobody knows what the fuck happened. All right, Jake, you with me? Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> this is. What are you laughing about? Uh, you no, better? I'm not laughing. This is just horrible facts. It is. Yeah. So people have no idea what happened to this little girl. I would say a week goes by, and people start pointing fingers at Haddon because they just see him lurking around the neighborhood. They know he's like a guy that's always looking for odd jobs. and they Was just, he still staying with the brother after that? Or? No, he's in the he area. Yeah. So he eventually like sets up a fucking uh, a tent in the woods, and he's he's just regularly hanging out here. That's occasionally, never, yeah. it isn't. And occasionally, he will find a place to live. Like, he ends up running a basement from a, a woman in Silver Spring. But now, he's just tooling around fucking Silver Spring. The cops call him in. So, as the police are talking to him, they just start really grilling him. They're like, we know what you did to that little girl. And he starts breaking down. And he runs to the bathroom. He starts throwing up. He's got diarrhea. So they're like, all right, cool. We fucking got him. It's like John every day. Jake. I'm sorry. I take fiber gummies now. <laughs> <laughs> so they think they got him. Now, to add to this, this is something that complicates it. The dad, um, Jeff Dorr, he um he experiences uh psychosis from all of this shit happening. Initially, they think he's the suspect. His ex-wife is even like blaming him because as soon as she finds out that the little girl's missing, she's like, "My ex-husband killed took her and he killed her. I don't know where he put her, but he took her and he killed her." So they start grilling the ex-husband and they've had some some violent incidents. So they have like a little bit to go on there. They they think there there's they might have um motive here because he's he's having such such um such animosity towards his wife yeah that maybe he did this to get back at her his child support was recently doubled so initially i think with like most kidnappings it points to somebody that the child knows mm -hmm. so they're grilling the dad before they even get to fucking had and at one point the dad confesses to the murder what because he just has a psychotic break mm-hmm Jesus Christ. And but, he, I think he felt extreme guilt from not paying more attention to the little girl and he was watching like a fucking NASCAR race. Uh -huh. he, he just felt like it was his fault either way. He did. And at that point he said, he claims that like he saw Jesus too. So the guy's clearly just having an extremely difficult time because of this awful thing. They don't even know what happened to her yet. Right, they just yeah. know she's Dude, not there. And those interrogations are insane. The yeah. way they just push a motive and a story on you mm -hmm. to the point where they say it so much you believe it too. Yeah. So that's just crazy. Yeah. But on top of this, too, they ask him when the last time he saw the little girl was. And he says 2.16 p.m., which was not true. The last time that he saw her was around noon. He's saying 2.16 because he feels terrible that he let a couple of hours go by where he wasn't observing her. Right. Yeah. Now, when they're interrogating Haddon, they're like, where were you at 2.16? He was like, I was on my way to work. And they're like, can you prove it? He's like, yeah, I have a time card which shows that I punched in at 2.46. He committed the murder around noon. So it was plenty of time for him to start cleaning up and then to fucking bring the body with him. 
he brought the body in the truck and then he took a nap in a church parking lot and then he drove to work at two he was at work by 246 and the body was still in the truck it was he ends up burying it but because his story checks out and his boss confirms like yeah he was at work at 246 there's like mm -hmm. i think he worked like 20 hours or 20 minutes away so there's like there's no way in 30 minutes he could kill a little girl Clean dispose of the body and right. be at work so yeah. they're like all right we don't have anything to go on you know they have to let him go i mean they feasibly he feasibly could have you know hit the girl in the head put her in the car yeah. and driven right to yeah. work seem like that is a thing they could have still followed up on it's insane <laughs> to me though because i mean she was nearly decapitated like how much how good could you be at cleaning up this yeah. yeah that's that's like a fixer style yeah. skill like mm -hmm. the fucking wolf in pulp fiction like, mm -hmm. jesus christ so he's not charged and for the longest time they have no idea what happened to this little girl and the father never gets charged uh with it either no no it's just a disappearance yeah Man. that is definitely the worst way to lose a custody battle that's fine. That's what I wanted. I wanted a look. Because I've had it in my head for 30 minutes. <laughs> Unreal, man. I'm sorry. Well, this this is something that'll bring your spirits back up. In September of 1988, Haddon gets into an argument with his mom. He beats her up, and then he tries to run her over with his truck, Jake. Jesus. it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What's the angriest you've ever gotten with your own moms? Oh, man. I've, nah, I don't want to say. Say it. I, I've yelled at my mom. I've said so, I said the F word. <gasps> what? My mom. You yeah. called her an F A G G? No, 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 not That's that word. First thing that came to my head. No, yeah. no, just was I it because of the meatloaf, Jake? I said the the bad F word. Well, they're both both bad F words. Uh, just you know. What? How old were you when you said "fuck you, mommy"? I was probably like nineteen. Thirty-three. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> nineteen, which is old, but also, yeah. yeah. Was she be, was she being a fucker though? She was, but she didn't deserve that. Mm. Yeah. That's very nice of you yeah. to say. Yeah. They often don't deserve it. Oh. <laughs> That's very sweet of you. Your mom's a lovely woman. I just want to tell you that. Thank you. Thank you. She yeah. truly is. And I can't, I don't, I don't remember the last time. I definitely gave her a hard time in high school, but I feel like I really put her through the ringer when I was in my 20s, breaking yeah. bones, falling down steps, getting arrested. So. To her, you were doing this too? <laughs> 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 a push. Getting her arrested in New York. <laughs> yeah. That lady's got my knife. Yeah. <laughs> hey, whose who's boy's pants are these? Yeah. <laughs> the only time I can remember being very mean to my mom, and I still regret this even though I was 12, we were planning a movie trip as a family. It was one of the first nights where the movie Ghost came out, so it, which I believe was 1991. And I wanted to do something else that day. We were going to the movies at night, and during the day, I wanted to do something. And my mom's like, I just don't have the money. We're going to the movies tonight, and I don't have the money to do whatever it is I wanted to do. And I was like, your job sucks. Damn. Yeah, pretty mean. Mm -hmm. and what could it have been that you wanted to do that would have, like... Probably rent movies. Been money, okay. Arcade, like, what was there to do as a kid? Probably movies. Yeah. Probably just go rent movies. Rent a movie before you go see yeah. the movie. Yeah, because yeah, like, that was my thing. We have ham at home, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> the ham at home. <laughs> so then we went to the movies, and uh, I was just expecting to get my ass beat by my dad. He didn't. But when we went to the movies, we got our seats. My dad's like, come with me to get popcorn. I was like, oh, fuck. He's going to whip my ass in front of all these people. And we just got to the snack stand, and he's like, what did you say to your mother? And I just started bawling my eyes oh. out. Oh. Just a fat little boy crying at Ghost. <laughs> 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 but he was very cool about I'm it. I'm sure he could tell that you fucking regretted it. Yeah. You were you knew you did wrong. Yeah, and it was just like Ghost too. As I put butter on the popcorn, he put his hands behind mine. <laughs> it's actually kind of fucked up now that I say it out loud. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Deeply disturbing. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's the meanest I ever was to my mom. And I It's not so bad. Thanks, John. I probably said worse shit to my mom at some point. Oh, that's very sweet. <laughs> All right. I don't know what to say anymore. <laughs> that's very sweet that you were <laughs> mean to your mom. So this is kind of funny, too. So he gets a year probation for that incident with his mom. Christmas 1988. He gets in a lot of trouble, Jake. What's he doing Christmas? All right. So he's got a basement that he's renting. And his landlord <laughs> kicks him out on Christmas. Kind of fucked up. Yeah, it's fucked yeah. up. Yeah. However, he's not having it. Uh -huh. And... 
it's funny. Like he's Kevin McAllister before there's Kevin McAllister because he starts setting booby traps in this basement. <laughs> I made my landlord. <laughs> <laughs> he sets up this 10 gallon drum above the entranceway to the basement filled with oil. So whoever opens the door to the basement is going to get splashed with this fucking oil. How did he fucking transport this drum by himself? <laughs> Brother, I don't know. God damn, this guy's resourceful. But dude, on top of this. Another R word. <laughs> the better one. <laughs> on top of this, he gets into the main house and he has a bunch of fish heads that he leaves throughout the house. He wraps them in newspaper. He leaves a bunch of rotting fish heads inside the piano, inside the stove, and inside the fucking uh, refrigerator. This is fucking dirty work. Yeah, this is pretty good. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, on top of that too, Jake, unfortunately she has two cats and he cuts the head off of two cats. Leaves one on the front doorstep and one on top of the stove. Oh my God. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. He's good for a little while, Jake. He's good for about two months and then in February of 1989 he gets in a little more trouble. He's going out more often, dressed as a woman, calling himself Kristen. He goes to a Baptist church, and they're having choir practice. Oh, no. And he steals 15 purses from the ladies in the choir. That's some very stinker behavior right <laughs> yeah. there. Dressed like a woman. And when the cops apprehend him, he demands that they call him a woman and refer to him as Kristen. Progressive. It Ahead is. of his time. Yeah. yeah. He gets 45 days in jail. For hmm. saying he's a woman? Oh. <laughs> Maybe not so progressive. What was in the purses, Mike? Do you know how much money he got? I don't know how much uh, money he got, Jake. Probably a lot of hard candy. And he did a lot of hard time for it. He yes. got three days per purse. <laughs> <laughs> Which comes out to about... Not too bad. Six hours per Werther's candy. <laughs> was it really Werther? <laughs> answer, answer me that, Adam. I don't know if you're doing a pun or if you're fucking tongue-tripped again. Probably was. <laughs> All right, another bad thing about to happen, boys. Oh, so, no. so brace yourselves, John. Get yourself a little bit of high. He just decapitated two cats. He did. October nineteen ninety two, a local woman named Penny Hodling takes him in. So she knows from the church group that he does gardening. So she hires him, dude. When you see this fucker's eyes, I don't know how anybody could want him around. But this lady, I guess, is is. As a kind heart, she takes him in. She gives him gardening work. She gives him the key to the house, too. Mm. Uh, He's not always very nice to her, either. Like, he'll scream at her because he says that he viewed her as a mother. Okay. And I think she took pity upon him. And her daughter was away at college. She had a very successful daughter. She graduated from Harvard. And she was coming back. He said had. <laughs> he said had. Take your so I know where this is going. I, you're so bad tonight. I know. I know. At this time, she has... A very successful daughter who's a Harvard graduate. She's coming back to the D.C. area because she got a job in D.C. And she's just biding her time until she starts her new job. Once the daughter arrives, fucking Haddon, he takes umbrage with that. And he doesn't like that he's not the one getting all the attention from her mom right now. Wow. So unfortunately, Penny tells Haddon that she's going away for a week. And Laura's gonna, Laura, her daughter, is going to be home alone. So he's got a key, and he takes full advantage of this. And one day while Laura's asleep, Haddon breaks in using a key. He's dressed like a woman, and he's wearing Laura's clothes. And while she's sleeping, he wakes her up with a rifle. And as soon as she wakes up, he says to her, tell me my name's Laura. She's just like, okay, I guess your name's Laura. She's like, tell me that you're sleeping in Laura's bed. And she tells him that. And he makes her strip down. He makes her get a bath. And when she gets out of the bath, Jay, don't look at me like that. I'm just, this guy is fucking sick. He is. Yeah. I'm waiting for the end of the story. Why are you looking at me like that? Because Jake's being really bad right now. I'm just, <laughs> I'm listening. I don't like right. these, these facts. After he gets this poor girl out of the tub, he puts tape around her nose and her mouth. <clears throat> And he puts so much on that it ends up suffocating her. And she dies from having all this tape on her fucking face. In a panic, he starts cutting it off. And he ends up, like, cutting cutting her face, cutting her throat, and then also cutting part of her earlobe off. So at this point, now there's a bloody crime scene. And he's trying to clean up this mess. And he does clean up the mess. He actually takes a nap in her fucking bed for a while. 
Jesus. And before he gets rid of the body, unfortunately for him, he leaves a bloody fingerprint on her pillowcase. So he ends up, takes the body. He ends up, uh, he takes a nap with this as well in his car. And then he ends up burying this, like he buried the, the last body. Is this guy fucking narcoleptic? He's taking so many naps. <laughs> Dude, uh, he, there's, uh, fuck, I wish I could remember the name of the book about this. But uh, in the book, they say that he slept for five hours in this girl's bed before he left. What? And he parked in the church parking lot to sleep again with the body with him. Jesus, how could you get such good sleep? <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. So at this point, he takes the fucking sheets with him. He takes the pillowcase with him. And he disposes of the pillowcase in the woods by the church, which is right by the victim's house. This is the bloody pillowcase. It is, yeah. Okay. Now, this is the last week in October we're getting toward, and he ends up driving to New England, which is kind of like his safe space. This is where his grandfather had the house on Cape Cod, and it was like the one place, he said it was the one place where people didn't call him a retard, so give it time, buddy. It's like his cheers. <laughs> where everybody knows you're retarded. But they won't say it to your face. <laughs> So he goes up there. He's got a sister that lives in Rhode Island, and he visits her, and she's like, ah, what are you doing up here? What he's doing up there is he's, he's hanging out at his grandfather's grave, and he actually buries some shit in front of the grave. He's got a bucket of mementos that he's stolen from victims of his over the years, including his most recent victim, Laura Hodling's class ring. So he buries that in, the grandfather's, uh, in front of the grandfather's grave. And then he ends up driving back to Maryland, and fortunately, the police know that it's him because they have the fingerprint on the pillowcase. And on November 6th, 1992... Wait, I thought he disposed of the pillowcase. He threw it in the woods. But they found it. They found it in the woods because the woods were so close by to the victim's house. So November 6th, 1992, Jake, he's arrested. And he's charged with murder. And in 1993, uh, he's convicted of second-degree murder, and he gets 30 years. Just for Laura? Just for her. Good. Mm -hmm. The police think that he's probably the one that killed the little girl, but they have nothing to go on. Now, eight months go by after, he, after he's convicted, and it's eight months before he finally tells police where he buried Laura's body, which was in the neighborhood, and um, he, he ends up leading them to it. Now, this is kind of funny. He's got a buddy that um, his cellmate, who looks like Jesus, and he feels compelled to, to confess to this guy. Wow. So he tells this guy fucking everything. And he's able to, like, tell police where that body is. So I don't know what they got in exchange for this, but one thing they're able to do is um, he's able to finagle that so that he and the cellmate can eventually get out and show police where different things are that he hid from certain victims. And this is in 1993 he's convicted. In 1995, police are able to use uh, DNA that they're able to extract. They took out the floorboards from his brother's house. They're able to extract DNA from that. Wow. Yeah. So they know th- th- that um, that the little girl died in that house. Wow. So at this point, like, they know that it's fucking him. But he still didn't confess to it. He still did not confess to it. Then how do we f- have the information about how he killed her? What do you mean? Like, you had all the details about how oh, yeah. he slit so, her throat and put yep. it in the duffel bag and all that. So in September, so they get, well, they have, that's their evidence right now. Okay. So it's not until the year 2000 where he ends up tipping them off as to where the body is. So he has police take him out. But he does not confess to this. He just says he knows where the body is. No, eventually he does. Okay. So he leads them to the body and the body is like off of, off of a uh, main road and it's covered, he tells police before they go out that the body's covered by an old mattress. And the cops are out there with him looking, and one of the cops sees an old mattress with springs sticking up, and he's like, yeah, that's probably it. And they said that hadn't got down, started like pawing at the dirt. And then eventually they see the kid's bones and Jesus. the outfit yeah. matching. The, the kid still had it on the bathing suit that she had on the day she died. Now in 2002... He says, like, oh, there's more things that I know. So he's like, but I'm not telling you where these things are unless you go to Kmart and you get me women's clothes and women's underwear and a wig. So cops are like, all right, we'll go shopping for you, you fucking weirdo. So they go to Kmart and they buy him everything that he wants. And what they're able to get from this is that bucket of jewelry that he had, including Laura Hodling's class ring. Wow. He just told them about that he buried it by his father's grave or his grandfather's grave. Yes. 
That's crazy. I, but he ended up bringing that back with him. Part of the excitement for him was was hiding shit and then digging it back up and moving it. Like a squirrel. <laughs> or a dog. Yeah, or a dog. <laughs> or a murderer. Or a, or a murderer. dumb yeah. fucking murderer. <laughs> yeah, paranoid schizophrenic. Yeah. <laughs> Man. And after uh, the confession of the little girl, they still didn't go for a death penalty? No, he gets 30 years for that, too. So he gets a total so of 60 years. So he could have years. gotten out before that confession. Yeah, I guess. An old man, but still. Yeah. yeah. Could have gotten out. Now he's in jail until... Because he, uh, he was 40. He was 41 by the time that he got out. I'm sorry, by the time where he was convicted, he's 41. Okay. So then he ends up admitting to the second murder. So now they're tacking on an extra 30 years. So he's not yeah. getting out of that. Okay. Hey, people live a long time these days, Mike. They could really be 101. Be. Yep. yep. I'm surprised he didn't try to pin it on the grandfather. The grandfather's dead. I know. But I mean, he dar- he buried the bucket with the grandfather. But it was my fucking grandfather. Look. Yeah. It's the bucket. He, he, he died. His skeleton. He, he came out. Came out. Yeah. Used bones, bones and worms money. for money. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And then he he paid a another yep. skeleton to dig up this hole for him. Now here's the deal. So well, no, we're not finished. <laughs> and then <laughs> we're finished. <laughs> I was kidding. We are finished with that. All right. So now he's seventy years old. All right. So he's still kicking. I mentioned earlier that he had a he had these these fucking culinary jobs on Cape Cod, mm-hmm. and Cape Cod had a bunch of weird murders, including. A murder called the Lady of the Dunes. You ever hear about that, you fucking morons? No, mm, not with that so, attitude. Sounds either. like one of your hockey romance novels. Oh, well, it's not. Uh. Although he does deserve time in the penalty box for what I'm about to tell you, Jake. So the Lady of the Dunes was this woman, where she was found with her hands and one of her forearms cut off. Jesus. And he had said at some point, like when police questioned him, he's like, "Yeah, I killed a lady at Cape Cod, and I used her fingertips as bait." He claims that he's the person who killed this woman. Hmm. When did he? When did he claim this? So this was when he was spilling the beans in the uh, in the nineties. Now this lady, she wasn't identified until fucking uh, the year two thousand. Her name was Ruth Marie Terry. People had no idea. Do you know? Um, fucking Stephen King's son. Like when he saw the artist rendering of this woman, he's like, "Oh, I think I know this woman." And the police gave a description of a bandana and a shirt that she was wearing when she went missing. And where Stephen King's son said he knows her from was from being an extra in the movie Jaws. No shit. What? The timeline could potentially add up that she was uh, Martha, or yeah, um, Jaws was filmed on Martha's Vineyard, which isn't too far from where the fucking, uh, the fucking Clark family house was mm-hmm. on Cape Cod. Wow. So it's conceivable that this might have been the, the fucking same woman. That's wild. Yeah, it is pretty weird. And he, is he the only one that's ever taken claim to that? Why Why did they not investigate it and pin it on him? There were other guys. All right, so it's funny you bring that up because uh, Ruth Marie Terry's, her ex, um, we're going to back up, Terry. Her ex was a, <laughs> <laughs> her ex was like a really awful guy who's been who's been questioned in four separate murders. So it's also conceivable that he could have done it. Damn. Now... An added layer of intrigue to this, boys, is that Whitey Bulger may also be responsible for this woman's what? disappearance because she had a connection to him as well. No way. Yep. What year did she disappear again? The 1974. 74. Wasn't that you know, the Jaws. year Jaws came out? Yep. My Lord. This so is... She could have been an extra in that movie. And he would have been 22. Our buddy Haddon would have been 22 at that time. Yep. Cooking. He was already killing pets at the time. Mm-hmm. Just staring mm. out at customers like, da da, da da. I don't understand the reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new defense against yeah. Jake. Yeah, fair. You should do <laughs> that. Fucking, just, I don't understand. Who are the Beatles? <laughs> <laughs> I never know what you're talking about, Jake. <laughs> They're a band who who don't make any songs I like, John. You don't like a single Beatles song. Nah. Are you just being a hipster? No. I don't like the Beatles, man. Have, have you ever said that to him? I'm in looking the same at him. room. I'm looking at him. That's, that's have you ever heard this? Idea? In his cherubic face, that I'm, I don't like the stinking Beatles. You know? I'm not a giant Beatles fan, and I would go as far as to say perhaps they're overrated. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's certainly songs that I like. Mm-hmm. 
You guys are entitled to your own opinions. Um, you're a little bit mad because I said they might, they could be considered overrated. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with that. You think, yeah, like I mean, slightly overrated. Yeah, people talk about them like they're the goddamn bee's knees. You know, it's incredible what the they whole did. Whole kit and caboodle. What was it four or five years they were together? Right. I think longer than that. Well, I mean, like when they had their break with the with the British invasion in America when they came to that's when I count the time, not the ten years they did in Hamburg, playing in the coal mine. I think, I think it was Liverpool. <laughs> I think you mean Liverpool. Hi, John. Mike, do you think do you think he means Liverpool? No, they I went to Hamburg to play. I don't want you to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking serious? All the goddamn voices you do, and I try one fucking voice that I thought sounded okay. I was solid. And you don't even crack a smile. You give me weird eyes and say, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, man. God damn. You like Jake more than me, don't you? No, he doesn't. I love you both, and that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> God damn, man. He can't answer that truthfully. I have to give him a ride home tonight. <laughs> You'll get a text. Oh, but, man, I forgot to tell you guys this. This Man, I can't believe I almost forgot to tell you this, but I'm so glad I remembered. So Haddon Clark, he was an industrious little fella, and at one point he started his own courier service. And he referred to himself as the Rockville Rocket, and he would tool around town on rollerblades delivering people's items. You mentioned rollerblades earlier, and I would have been very upset if you had not mentioned it. This is incredible That's, news. There's a picture of it, too. There's a picture of it? Yeah. So you're going to see this moron on rollerblades. The Rockville he, he's Rocket. He's got rollerblades, a helmet, a bunch of uh, letters under his arm, and he's wearing a Washington Capitals jersey. <laughs> And it's in the 70s? No, this is the 80s. late 80s, early 90s. Whoa. Yeah, I guess rollerblades probably weren't until the 80s. Could have been you a... know, right? Weren't you one of the first rollerbladers, you gay guy? <laughs> <laughs> nah, he liked it when I called you gay. You had roller... You had roller <laughs> I love that shit, man. Yeah. Roller skates was, was the 70s. Dude. John, yeah. I feel like you got strings on the corners of my mouth. Every time you say that <laughs> word, it makes them perk right up, baby. <laughs> I know, dude. Roller skates have been around forever. They were around in the fifties, right? With the drive-up restaurants, car hops. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you oh guys know you're God. supposed to tip your Sonic car hop? Do they still come out on rollerblades? Mm, I haven't seen some. Do I've had a uh, a skater uh, in Lancaster before. It's really nice when they are when they are on wheels. <laughs> I love wheels uh, delivery food. That doesn't raise your anxiety with the, like them carrying like the tray or bag. No, or they're food. spinning. That That's cool. the kind what of the fuck are they move. spinning for, John? Because they spinning, dude. What do you mean? Why? Wouldn't you spin around? No, I would. I would get to and fro, get my money, and get the fuck out. You wouldn't do a little yeah. trick. Listen, I'm there to support my damn family. I'm not there to fucking. Uh, well, I'm there to <laughs> tip the best display of um. Aerobicism. <laughs> They're qualifying <laughs> for the X Games while serving you a cheeseburger. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that kind of stuff. <laughs> you should apply there. And they're all closed. They're all nah. closed. They, the reopened, one they reopened the one by us. Did they? Yeah. Huh. It's like quietly reopened. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. It's, D it's yeah. DL uh, Sonic Burgers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's DL. It's where all the gay black guys <laughs> go to get their burgers. <laughs> Yo, chill. I told my girl I'm at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I told my girl I'm at Wendy's. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow, look at us. Look at us. That, uh, that other, that's a very, very crazy last part of that story with the lady in the dunes. Yeah, it's insane, man. Like, there's so many different connections to her and people who might have murdered her, and then also Stephen King's son. Injecting himself into the damn story, mm -hmm. and he wasn't um, he wasn't in Jaws as an extra. He just happened to. I don't know, man. He was he just, just hanging out fan. on the set. Yeah, could have been. How old was Stephen? Stephen King's son had to be pretty young in 1974, right? Well, they didn't find out who this lady was until the year 2000. Okay. Actually, no, wait. It was a uh, last year was when they found out who she was. 2000 was the year where fucking. Um, 
where Haddon Clark admitted to the little girl's murder. Yeah. 2022 is when they finally figured out who the Lady of the Dunes was. They used their, they used the genealogy testing to find out her name. How was it that long before like there was nobody missing or like I don't know. How could it possibly have gone well, here's that long the deal, man. nobody reporting somebody missing and connecting it? If it's a lady who's in association with a guy named Whitey Bulger, odds are she's probably not the kind of lady that people are going to assume that something horrible happened to her. You could probably say, like, all right, she's out, probably out doing wild bitch shit and doesn't want to be found. Hmm. That sounds like a pretty unique theory. Me, myself, personally, as a victim blamer. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if... You, you know me. You, you know the kind of wild stallion I am. If I went missing today, would you bat an eye? Or would you think that I'm just out having a good-ass time? No, I'd probably be worried. Yeah. Oh. Well, it makes me feel good that you say that. But I Even might... if you were out having a good-ass time, I'd be a little bit worried. Oh, man, I just like having a good-ass time sometimes. Though. I, I know you wouldn't be having a good-ass time because we'd be getting the Western Union requests. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I guess it will be a, a clear chain of events that <laughs> let us know digitally <laughs> that you're having a good time. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing for a good time, baby. <laughs> now, if I catch you having a good time, I am going to take advantage of it and have a good time with you for the that's first the, time. That's what I want. That's all I want out of my I don't life. want to encourage you, though. No. I don't want to. I can do bad all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I think you need a chaperone. <laughs> That would be good if you could hire them. A chaperone that will, like, put a little governor on your fun enough to mm -hmm. keep you alive? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I could use one of those. <laughs> hey, easy on the shots. Did you just drink, why don't you just drink a beer for this one? You only a shot and a beer every time. I could have used that guy for my whole 20s. Oh, good you didn't find him, man. <laughs> <laughs> my girlfriend is not. <laughs> I need to have more fun, though. I'm planning on more fun. What are you going to do for fun? Just get away. Get away <laughs> by my damn self. All right. That sounds mysterious and like mm -hmm. you don't want to give any specifics. You don't need to be knowing where I'm going. <laughs> you don't want to tell me anything. Damn. Nope. Where are you going? What you're going to do when you get there? Mm -hmm. Who you're going to call when you can't get back? Ghostbusters. <laughs> you better believe it's going to be something strange in that neighborhood. What would you do if you went away? Just go sit on the beach? <clears throat> I just go places, man. Go oh, my God. This dude is creeping me out. Why are you being so <laughs> fucking I'm telling you what I do, dude. man. I just go places. Yeah, I just go places. I'll tell you exactly what I do. Name a city. I'll tell you what I do. I know. I you go. You have fun. You get drunk. You get yourself high. You enjoy nature. That's what you be doing. Sometimes I don't get drunk. I always go to the mall. I always hit the mall up. You do? Okay. Every damn city, I mm -hmm. hit the mall. Got to. Mm -hmm. Got to see what the mall's doing. You go to the mall? No, not really. God damn, I'm trying to throw you a fucking bone here, man. <laughs> Tell me what you do. I just get around and see new things, man. Go to Mexico, okay. eat a hooker's pussy. <laughs> um, yeah, I did that. <laughs> yeah, that was called a vacacione. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's what I be doing. You're not going to tell us when you go on your solo trip where you go? I don't even know where I'm going. Oh, I might. Here's what I something, <gasps> Mr. Ray. Something that Are was you suggested go to the airport and buy a ticket. No, but I will say this: I just don't know yet what I'm going to do. I'm going to do. I'm going to Disney with my family this week, but then I would say within the next two months is when I'm going to do my solo thing. Uh -huh. Something was suggested to me via a podcast today that I might bring to fruition. Ooh. a Disney podcast that I listen to. Um, hold on, hold on. So you got to stop right there. Yeah, let, us, to let us breathe for a second. <laughs> Jesus, I need to readjust my fucking posture. All this terrible stuff he just told us. He's like, yeah, I was listening to a Disney podcast today. Let me tell you all this. So I was listening to a Disney podcast today, and the man and the woman who hosts the podcast challenged themselves to go to Disneyland and Disney World within a twenty-four hour period. That's stupid. Why? You can't enjoy either of yeah, them. Yeah, and it's a lot of travel. You, what are you going to do? Fucking four hours? TSA? At the end nope. of the day? Okay, you got to start in LA and then take the... No. You got to use time for time yeah. changes yep, to your advantage. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you go, so you're going back. You go east to west. Yeah. yeah. No, you would start out west to east. So going from... You would from, close out Disneyland, yes. get on a red eye, and open Disney World. Yes. 
the ch- the twenty four hours are not in the same. Wait, no, no, no. Day. So you would start in Orlando. That's and then you would just, go to California. Yeah, Jesus All right. Christ. Mike. Well, Danny's going to rewind and that. And the same calendar day <laughs> is what the, the challenge is, the same calendar day. because You have to be, all right, so you have to have been in both Disney World and Disneyland at the same time on two separate days. Okay? Okay. So if I'm in Disney World at 9 a.m. on Saturday, by fucking 9 a.m. on Sunday, I got to be at Disneyland, which isn't that hard to pull off. No. No, if you catch a nine o'clock flight, you get there around midnight. Mm-hmm. That would be a fun back. thing to do. That's what you're going to challenge yourself with. I might. Your solo vacation after you go to Disney World <laughs> is going to be to go back to Disney World and Disneyland. John, I wish I can convey to you how hard it is for me to not get cocaine and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, I'm at war with my own soul. I think you have conveyed appropriately when he gets home with this vacation idea. He wishes upon a star that he does not <laughs> succumb to these temptations. Uh, All that, right, this actually uh, this sounds fun, yeah. and like a challenge mm-hmm. for sure. It sounds like something like a newlywed Christian couple would do. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm unfortunately born again. <laughs> my idea of fun. <laughs> is doing degenerate shit, but I can't live that degenerate lifestyle anymore, so I have to find different kinds of fun. And for me, it's essentially challenging myself to get to two airports. (laughs) Three, really. Yeah, true. But Are you going to uh, at least um, stay a little bit in the second destination? Yes, I would definitely do that. Okay. Well, what if I book a solo trip and then you go to a mountain uh, in Los Angeles with me? I would do that. You would? I, w- I would love that. All right. Well, why don't you do that when you're by yourself? You wouldn't go to a a, a nature destination by yourself? No, I, d- I would definitely do that. Yeah. I would like to do maybe like a hiking trip too or something. I have to, I have also to. looking at prices. Yeah. I have to like be engaged in something. Like as much as I love Disney, like I'm not relegated to just Disney shit. Yeah. Well, Orlando has a lot of other options that you can throw at Disney into a trip to Florida with. True. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same with LA. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I wonder, like, I, because you can't do degenerate shit anymore. If this is like what you get from the Disney thing is seeing other people indulge like crazy in these places. You know what I mean? For me, Disney is just all good memories. So, Okay. I will say this. I think this there's probably a large emotional component to it, whereas like I did not have a really happy experience with my birth family. Yeah. There was a lot of anxiety, a lot of like depression, a lot of like just like toxicity. But the times where we went to Disney, those are wonderful memories. You did go to Disney growing up? Yeah, I think we went three times and we had we we all had a blast. Mm -hmm. And it was like it was the most normal that I think my family was was how happy everybody was there. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that plays a large a large yeah, part in course, me yes. enjoying it so much. Absolutely. Yeah. And the times where I've gone with, with my family of my choosing, yeah. we've really had a blast, and everybody loves it. We had so much fun. Well, yeah, we, we did. Dude, that yeah. Was a, I know. Yeah. And that was my first time since probably Disneyland when I lived in L.A. Mm-hmm. 10, 11 years ago. And it was like, I think the Magic Kingdom would have had a bigger effect on me because mm-hmm. that's where I remember going mostly. Yeah. Because Epcot as a child, I feel like I didn't even realize it. That was Epcot's kind of more of an adult thing. Dude, yeah, right. They've, yeah. Stepped, they've stepped up their game. The, the around the world thing. I remember, I guess, doing that as a child and just being like, "This is fucking boring." Yeah. Kind of like when you get to America and it's just like colonial white house looking shit, and it's like, "Oh fuck, dude." Yeah, this is like really boring. Uh, but as an ad- adult going to Epcot, I was like, oh, this is sick. I wish I would have done the drink around the world thing. <laughs> as a child. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, just being down there and like, you see fucking uh, Pluto or... Uh, mm-hmm. Hanson, Boys to Men. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny G. All that shit. Oof. It's like, oh, this is this is fun. Dude. Yeah, and that Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster is fucking top notch. We had a bail on that because yeah. it broke down. Yeah. Yeah. Or no, we had like a long ass wait yeah, that we couldn't I, I get went on. back with my family. Uh, I went oh, back yes. with my family, yes. Yeah, it's uh, a roller coaster. But yeah. dude, I was surprised at Epcot how many rides they actually have now. Because like when you went as a kid and when I went as a kid, the most boring place on earth. No, it was like you would go into like the spaceship earth thing and there was a yep. thing where Figment 
uh, the yeah. dragon character would like kind of take you through the Imagineer process. Yep. Yeah, it's still yeah, which was interesting as a kid to see like the animation process and all that kind cool. of shit. Yeah, um, but that was like I don't know. I guess more like more museum feely than mm -hmm. theme ride. Yeah, but what what were the rides now? So besides, yeah, Guardians is the big one. Then they have uh, Ratatouille. That's like a fun little like it's almost like a teacup kind of ride where uh -huh. you're like. You're in a thing, and then you're just like going around a thing, watching screens. It's like 4D. Things are getting sprayed on you. Come, and it's pretty wild. And then uh, <laughs> just they, like a regular kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> and then I think they just opened Tron. Did they do that? April fourth. April fourth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, that sounds fucking. Is that in crazy. Epcot or is that Magic King? I don't. I don't know. They've been working on that for Epcot, a long okay. time, and yeah. it doesn't seem to yeah. be like. Time appropriate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The remake came out yeah. ten years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's very weird. But I'm sure the ride will fucking rule. Yeah, I can't wait. Universal in uh, Dude. L.A. with the Mario oh, world. Yeah, so I would love Mario to see that. World. How long is that there for? I, I think, think it's a permanent installation. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's like the new like. Well, their answer to Harry Potter world. Do they have the Harry Potter world in L.A. too? I don't know. It looks like we're gonna have to try out their uh, haunted horror nights out there <laughs> yeah. this year mm -hmm. and uh, try the. Uh, haunted mushrooms before I go to Mario <laughs> Land. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's one thing I wouldn't do. <laughs> you would do mushrooms yeah. at a uh, theme park? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It adds a little bit of fun. It does. Should I do it in nature first? Mushrooms? Yeah. You've never taken any kind of hallucinogen? No. Or psychoactive? Well, I, I guess weed's psychoactive. Hmm. Um, I don't know if I would recommend it for you, Jake. Oh, I had salvia. Did you freak out and leave the dimension? <laughs> Well, it was only like five minutes, right? And then you come down. Yeah, but you saw like crazy shit, right? I did see crazy shit. Yeah. That's wilder than any mushroom trip you'll ever take. Really? Yeah. Mushroom can get like heavy and like emotional if you take a lot of it, but yeah. like salvia fucked me up for a day. I couldn't look at people in the eyes for like a week. You're saying if I take mushrooms, we're going to start to lactate? <laughs> <laughs> Just, so uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not going to suck your titties. Oh, <laughs> uh, Mike, did you, do you know what the theme is for Halloween Hard Nights next year? One of the big, you know how they have like the three big. They announced one of them. Is after. one of them Chucky? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Dude, imagine all those little Chuckies running around. Oh my God, I didn't even think of that. They're gonna just be fucking Chuckies Wait, running around. Wait, do they hire little Chuckies? They uh, have to. What are they gonna chop normal people in half, Jake? <laughs> Put them on Roombas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, okay. How short can you be as an adult and not be a midget? Ooh, great question. A Chucky can't be taller than four or five. If you're a four foot nine Chucky, I'm not scared of you. Yeah. And here's something relative <laughs> to that. Yeah. And uh, Danny had a, had a great take on this, but did you guys see the video of Hasbulla interacting with Mark Wahlberg? No. no. He didn't like him. And normally Hasbulla... Was, Mark didn't like Hasbulla? <laughs> no. <laughs> Hasbulla didn't like Mark Wahlberg? Hasbulla didn't like him. Now, normally Hasbulla, anybody you see him meet, he'll play around with them, he'll punch them when they're not looking. Yeah. He wasn't having it. Danny thinks that it's because Mark Wahlberg is a Conor McGregor supporter. <coughs> okay. And Hasbulla is from the same region that Khabib Nurmagomedov is from. Yeah. So they're mortal enemies. Hasn't Hasbulla met McGregor before, though? No, McGregor actually told him he, he would punt him. <laughs> And I'm sure Connor means it. <laughs> Is this video of him not fucking with Mark? Yeah. So he's he's meeting him, and I think Mark Wahlberg's trying to get him to punch him, but he's not having it. It's he's fucking yeah. bent down like that, dude. Dude, That's this disrespectful. Looks, this looks like a dad that neglected his kids and is trying to bring it back. <laughs> yeah. He's clearly not feeling it, and I hate seeing Hasbro like this. Stand offish. <laughs> and imagine, listen, imagine like—is that Dana White? It is. <laughs> This should be like this should have been the season finale for a fucking slap fight <laughs> of entourage. <laughs> <laughs> but Danny said that it's because he's he's a supporter of of Conor McGregor, and I think that's the truth. And I think that that's why Hasbulla wow. is really holding back here. I think he's. I'm surprised I, he didn't fucking stab him, dude. I think <laughs> pull out a tiny knife. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's at least playing the game a little bit because Dana White, that's his buddy, and he's kind of uh -huh. humoring him. But 
you can see how deep his loyalty lies, Damn. which is insane for a person who's three foot four and 40 pounds. It's deeper than him. It, it is. And he could conceivably be killed by a feral cat, <laughs> but he's sticking to his guns and he's being loyal to Khabib, which I believe a hundred percent. The and way I, he ran from those dogs the other day, you know, a cat would take his desk. Dude, down. Like, like, I think I said it on Twitter, but to a Hasbulla, dogs are like gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't blame him. I cannot yeah. believe that his, uh, Loyalty runs so fucking deep. He's a real one. And that you've given it so much thought. Dude. Brother, I, I, I think about this Dagestani Chucky doll most of the day, every day. <laughs> I, I thought you were going to say, like, Mark Wahlberg, you know, because I've, I've heard bad stories about people meeting him and him being kind of, like, tough guy. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I was wondering if that was the case, but he was, like, fully trying to embrace him. Yeah. I don't know. know. Do you think it's disrespectful? Like, are you supposed to just stand up and look down at Hasbilla? Or are you supposed to kneel down like he's a child? I would, um, I would put my dick in his face. <laughs> I think that's less disrespectful than picking him up or kneeling down. And I was going to say, the only thing more, more disrespectful than kneeling down is probably picking him up. Yeah. But I feel like Hasbilla, most of Hasbilla's punches are when somebody's holding him mm-hmm. or when they're seated. Like, he can only get to their face when mm-hmm. they're in the seated position. And yeah. How old is he again? Uh, 19. He, he might be 20 now. Yeah. Oh, I think he's 19. I think you probably know, man. I honestly yeah. probably <laughs> think you know. You it's crazy. Fucking weirdo. What's his zodiac sign? Does anyone? <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy because they say midget is the little person N word, but I truly believe that holding them like a baby is the real N word. It's a weird way to think of language. <laughs> <laughs> Very poetic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's where I'm at with Hasbla. And I gotta, I gotta tell you this. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the Hasbla minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not convinced. You never see Hasbla making appearances. You'll see him at UFC, okay? In Vegas? He goes yeah, to Vegas? Okay. He, not very often. I think he, he's been to maybe one or two. Do you think he, he has a tiny passport? I don't. He holds I the think, signs in between rounds. You can't see him. <laughs> I think there's a chance that Hasbla is an AI generation. Damn. Like think, Tupac think about it like this. He's cute, right? He's a cute little guy. Yeah, yeah. He's the only cute midget out there. Every other midget in this world looks like they were created by a pile of extra big toes that God had laying around. <laughs> That's not true. That's it's not also a weird that they created an adversary for him. Like, why yeah. would there be two right. cute midgets Who's the in other one? one area? Abdu. Oh, he doesn't look quite the same. No, like Hasbulla, I think the appeal of Hasbulla is that you can tell he's a rough motherfucker. He's always he's always driving ATVs, driving cars too fast, shooting off guns, socking people while they're not looking. Yeah. And Abdu Rozik is just a little singer. Oh, uh, why do they have beef? Just because they're little? Yeah, I think that, that was the initial... Um, that's how they were introduced to the world in that they were like... F- you know, priming for a fight or something like that. So are you saying that Hasbro is a Boston Dynamics type? I'm not robot discounting it, or a CGI. And I'm not discounting it. Videos, either or. Wow, oh, boy, you like think a, a lot about they, this guy. They, they reworked it to Small World, one of the little dolls, and turned them into Hasbro. Can we agree this is not a midget though? This is something different. This is something he's, new. He's got human growth deficiency. Is that what midgets have? No, it's like the Gary Coleman disease. Okay. He'll never get taller, though, right? He's like a teacup human. That's it, man. He's 3, 4, and 40 pounds. 3, 4. We need him to play Chucky. Damn. I know. We need He's him perfect. to play Chucky. How great would it be if he... He demands that he has to use a real knife, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what else is at Halloween Horror Nights uh, rumored? Megan. So they might really uh, be hiring a lot of small people. Oh, shit. Damn. Megan was funny. I like Megan. I didn't see it. I tried to go see it, but the f- theater was too crowded. Do they have breaks like kids, like where they have to, like, every four hours you have to switch them out kind of thing? If you're under a certain height? Yeah. That's rude, Jake. <laughs> no, I'm... <laughs> rude and a, insensitive? You have... <laughs> that's another morning show. <laughs> the hundredth least <laughs> rude thing that, he's, that we've said. Oh, in. man. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they get the same breaks if they're uh, 18 years old. I feel like they have some type of, like, you know, 
card they can pull. Yeah, must be this tall to have rights. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I, well, I, your kids under eighteen work jobs, so I'm sure you can be a short sixteen year old kid and play Chucky, right? I guess sure. You can't be. You gotta be really short. Yeah. I need my Chuckies to be little. I know, man. I'm gonna be screaming if I go and the Chuckies are too big. I know. You need them below the knee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God. I'm on acid. Yo, these yeah. Chuckies are getting too big. <laughs> <laughs> these Chuckies are Charles's. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, they got their work cut out for them. I will say this. So, I don't, did I mention this last week on Little Stingers? How there was part of Coney Island was a little person colony. Yeah, it, yeah. it got us talking on about that village. Yeah, mm. they can be found, and I think now if the price is right, because they're in such high demand, that you could probably really put together a nice little army of little people. You're saying that should be the next Patreon goal? <laughs> <laughs> little, little stickers. <laughs> Just all little versions of us. I would pay so much money to see Lil Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> having And dying in your bunk bed years from now. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the, uh, yeah, I mean, if they can pull it off having... Just Chucky's roaming wild in Universal Studios. Nothing would be more terrifying. I think they're going to go fake route. I think it'll be animatronic dolls on something like a Roomba. I do too. Yeah. Well, they didn't have anything in I think Orlando that was specifically from one of the, like the weekend, they didn't have weekends running around the main streets. No. But I think uh, in, in LA, house. you're going to find a lot of. Yeah. Midgets that are actors. True. They're out there. Now, here's something else to consider, too. If you have Chuckies, if that park is rotten with Chuckies, lousy with them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lousy with Chuckies. <laughs> How are you going to keep black people in that park? <laughs> answer that, Jake. Uh, I can't answer that. I. They're so scared of them. Do you think that's their tactic? It oh might be, my dude. God. Yeah. Dude, what if, like, anytime oh. there was civil unrest now, instead of bringing in the National Guard, they just brought in an army of Chuckies? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Guys, I think you may have defeated yeah. activism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think Kyle Rittenhouse or something? <laughs> we got 60 Chuckies in formation. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, seeing the formation split would just haunt Oh, them. my God. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's what's coming down the pike. This is InfoWars with Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. It's, it, it could be, man. Could Dude, it? I, I, it is. Listen, are you aware of how what, ch what effect Chuckies have on black people? It's only barely have I scratched the surface. The Chuckies are black people scarecrows. We tested it on dad meat. How? Yep. We used to have my son dressed up That's as Chucky right. and we would scare every black guest we had. <laughs> he would jump out for me on the couch. And did they get scared? Yeah. Yeah. I would have gotten scared. It got David James, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'm white. It would have scared me. No. I think I'm just as scared as Chucky as any black fella. All right. Well, you are Italian. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Damn. Are we? We're all Italian. A little bit. We are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just stirring the sauce, baby. We're Italian, one, are we? We're, we're all yeah. one race. That's that's a good Italian podcast name, Stirring the Sauce. <laughs> that's all we're doing. That should be a uh, a new special we do mm -hmm. once a year. It's all Italian, all yeah. the time. They just watch us eat Sunday gravy. Featuring Craig, uh, what's his name? Rigor, I can't even fucking remember his name. Oh man, well, what's Rigor Rolly or some shit? Yeah, from uh, the Menendez brothers. Hey, Ma! Yeah, yeah. I forgot that Spigger character's Rolly. based in, yeah. in reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what do we establish this episode? We're gonna need, <laughs> we're gonna need Miss Gladys's take on now working for the Murdoch family. Mm -hmm. All right. Like 
Yeah, I'll have to contact her and see what she can say. Good luck getting in touch with her. Mm -hmm. I would love to see a uh, Miss Gladys on the witness stand <laughs> <laughs> giving testimony about the Murdochs. That'd be great. They put your ass on that stand. They'd be calling it a witness stand. <laughs> Is it, it every time he's tired and refuses to end an episode? It's like a kid that won't go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I just love podcasting so much. Man. Yeah. I <laughs> love it. the best job it I've ever had. It makes me feel neat. Yeah. I'm like, oh man, all right, you can stay up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever you want. You never seen this movie? All right, we can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we covered it all tonight. Yes, we did. Is there anything else you guys want to get out of the way before I set sail for Disney World? Oh, my God, you're going before I see you next time? You're going? Yeah, I'm going to be going Friday. Oh, my God, that's so exciting. That's awesome. It's really oh, exciting. Let me tell you a quick Disney fact that I learned. I've been doing a lot of Disney research, and I'm, I'm really, I, th I think I might become a Disney vlogger. So one funny thing that I learned with, um, you know, people, they inhabit the costumes there. Mm -hmm. If you're having... A medical emergency inside the costume you are forbidden from taking your head off what you have to do this and there's That's like hundreds of employees around and a wow. Pluto paramedic will come and scoop you up and take you to the abortion clinic <laughs> are they going up 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 with the little gurney yeah with the little cartoon yeah. gurney yeah Jesus yeah well, I'll cover one eye and raise, raise your one hand. hand. Yep. And what do they do if you take your fucking hat off? Do they cut your head off, brother? Oh my god! What well, you better you better set the glue traps because you got a mouse problem. <laughs> <laughs> John, you've heard of the haunted mansion, haven't you? The haunted mansion may actually be haunted. What? I I listen. Man, you have gone are you deep watching, down the Are you hole. watching Stoke films for this? I've watched nothing but Disney stuff for like the past week. I love that you were just there and you're still like, I got to get a refresher course on what I Disney so World much. is. Did you ever see Saving Mr. Banks? Mm. Oh, is that why you watched it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. is I, it? I know another reason why you watched it. Why? Because you got some uh, P-U-S-S-Y. I did during Saving Mr. Banks. M-I-C. It was more like Saving yeah. Mr. Spanks. That's what you were doing. <laughs> M-I-C. See you real H soon. How do you spell Michael? A E L. So hard to spell. I thought you were going to go with cum. C U M. Got some P U S S Y. Thank you. I like that. Yeah. That's nice. And I almost shut the goddamn movie off because that lady was being such a bitch. <laughs> Who is the star of it? Uh, Emma Thompson, I think her name is. Oh, she's a real. She can play a real stuffy woman, can't she? Yeah. yeah. The, the real life lady was a real. Uh, <laughs> See you with T. Do you guys wear the bands? Um, at the park? No, nah, not anymore, no. I gave up on them. What were they for? What, why do you choose not to wear them? You can do it now. Everything's through your phone. Uh, yeah. I, you can <laughs> still get them, but it's yeah. more just a to have thing. something to wear. Yeah. Like everything you can do once you uh, put your thumbprint into the little teller thing. Yeah. Oh, and I guess once your child has a cell phone. <clears throat> yeah. Like if you had a little five-year-old that didn't have a cell phone, yeah. you would want them to have the magic band. Right. Yeah, that would work. You'd have your own phone, and then they could scan themselves onto this shit. But there's really no use for the band unless you have... All right, so they got something now called Genie Plus and Lightning Lane. Mm -hmm. Then also, you can buy things with the band. So unless you want your credit card linked to the fucking kid's band, yeah. or unless like they're doing shit without you mm -hmm. that's, that's uh, Genie Plus or Lightning Lane related. Yeah, yeah. which, I mean, those are good things. We yeah, used to yeah. love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the kid just likes wearing it, probably. Yeah. Well, kids yeah, like yeah. a little fucking bracelet. I know that about kids. They like a little fucking bracelet. <laughs> Mike, so. are you going to wear a Mickey cho choker while you're there? <laughs> <laughs> yes, get on all, <laughs> all fours to scan in. <laughs> Daddy, why does that guy have a tail? <laughs> <laughs> What's his tail attached to? It's just a fucking butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Please send me a picture uh, of you in a goofy hat, by the way. You know how like they make those butt plugs that have like animal tails attached? That's exactly what I was referencing. <laughs> I took a chance on connecting with coworkers at a job once. Jesus. <laughs> Where is this going? <laughs> all right. So I was I, I really felt like we all hated the same coworker. So 
I had been at this job for maybe a month, <laughs> and I really felt like we all hated a this. month. We all hated this lady who was just unbearable. So I um I created a memo on the um the work template, which stated all the um all the different animal butt plugs which this lady Nancy was permitted to wear at work. And I gave a description of each one, and I put it in all my coworkers' boxes, who I also thought hated this woman, Nancy. And as luck would have it, they all did hate her as much as I did. Thank God. Yeah. You didn't sign the letter, did you? They knew it was me. <laughs> if nobody's gotten a butt plug memo before, then all of a sudden Mike starts working there. <laughs> and you're getting butt plug memos. <laughs> it's going to be from me. Yeah. That is uh, day one of logic class, from what I can remember. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Always be plugging. If you work at a job for 10 years and you've never received a memo about a butt plug in your folder, <laughs> and then Mike starts working on <laughs> I like how you did that whole thing like Andrea Bocelli. <laughs> He's my favorite Italian opera singer. Yeah, you fucking slob. I'll bet he is. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Ave Diarrhea. <laughs> He is. He really is a wonderful man. Beautiful wife too. You ever see her? No. Got some ragers. Uh, I don't know about ragers. She's just a beautiful woman. Slender woman. Slender Italian. Leggy. Dark haired. I know who hasn't seen her. Uh, who said that? Who said that? I think that was coming from the body behind me. Jake. There's somebody I'm, in there saying all these terrible things. I don't remember. Oh, a blind joke. What? God damn. It was so bad it took me 45 <laughs> seconds to get it. I'm still trying to figure out what Shelly's wife looks like, but I know that I remember she looked beautiful. Mm -hmm. You smack it around to her? I did not, no. Bop it off? No. Bop around? Mm -mm. <clears throat> I did not. Fuck, I want to go to Disney World so fucking bad. I know, now. it's the best. I, I know. fucking you love it too. It up, dude. I'm so mad they got rid of Song of the South or uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Splash Mountain. <laughs> I grew up watching that video. Song of the South? Mm -hmm. It's formative to my youth. I haven't seen it yet, but a man sent me a link for it. You never saw it? No. I never saw it. I'm How I've, did I see it? I've seen clips of it, and I know that it's Uncle Remus based. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I've never seen it. It's just him I, telling a story about the freaking Brayers. I don't want to ask who is Uncle Remus. I don't want you guys to answer it either. I'm sure someone He's will. Look in your heart and you'll find him. No, no, I'm sure I won't. Skip bitty doo da. Yeah. Skip bitty. Okay. All the bluebirds. Oh, he's uh, the guy who sings it. Yeah. Okay. There's a bluebird. Thank God. I was show. afraid where that answer was going to go. It's nice. He's singing the song. Yes. And of course, as a fucking six year old, I didn't know what slavery was. Mm hmm. Or racism. So was he to me, it was just it, no, but the emancipation uh, had happened, and I think the premise is that he still lives on this plantation, and where people may take umbrage with it is yeah. that you know it could be viewed as perhaps propaganda in convincing people okay. that hey, it's not so bad here. Right. Gotcha. Okay. But it's from fucking like 1945 mm -hmm. or something. You know what I mean? It's like truly a fucking different time. Mm -hmm. It's the, not like when you get on fucking Splash Mountain, yeah. right? Do you, you think, think anything him? like this? You know now they mean? did shut down the ride because at the top of the log flume, everybody has to scream the N word or else it doesn't go over. No, they don't. And then you could actually buy the keychain where you can see yourself saying the word. <laughs> you and your entire family. you have to pay for them to delete it. That's what you have to do. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, you pay for them to like destroy the mug while you're there. <laughs> Throw the keychain in the river. Could you imagine if uh, Uncle Remus met Chucky? <sighs> Jake? That'd be zippity doo. Ah! <laughs> I love it, Jake. Let's do it. <laughs> we got a hit. Damn. No, we don't. Damn, we're the podcast and Beatles. <laughs> I was going to scream, don't say it right as you were saying it. And it was too late. You could scream at any time yeah, in the podcast, you want. man. You could scream anything. Don't say it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll start using that way more then. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for joining us tonight. If you're watching this on Patreon, thank you for becoming a patron. It means a lot to us that you support us. Uh, we're able to do all the dumb shit that we do, and it really means a lot. If you're not a patron yet, go to patreon.com slash thinkers. That's L-I-L-S-T-I-N-K-E-R-S. -E you pay either $4 a month or $40 for the year. That gets you early access to every episode. It gets you extra episodes, monthly AMAs, 
weird shit like we did tonight with the fucking celebration of the Murdochs. Uh, sketches we're releasing. You're going to get everything early. Um, book club meetings. Yeah. And just whatever other dumb shit that we could add to just make it worthwhile. And uh, I really have a lot of fun doing this. Dude, so much fun. And I really can't wait for people to see this fucking Casey Anthony video. So by the time you guys see this, the Casey Anthony video will be out. You're a patron, so you'll get access to this already. Man. And uh, for those of you that aren't patrons yet, yeah, just go to the fucking Patreon. Just it's well, it's so coming out Sunday, the nineteenth. Yeah, this might so, be up before yeah, that. By the time people watch this for free, it'll already be up on the Patreon. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you just do yourself a favor yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Trust me, mm -hmm. we got so much more coming down the pike. <laughs> I thought it's been pipe this whole time, but Mike corrected me earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, just With my it. pipe, <laughs> no, I, I piped Jake down. No, no, for getting this not. wrong. Um, yeah, dude, so much more stuff. Uh, the Alien Wernos footage, mm -hmm. OJ, it's all coming. And it's all happening. It's crazy. And before we go, tell our perverts in Alaska where you're going to be. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be in Anchorage. Uh, so if you know anyone up there, I might... Actually, I might get some uh, Robert Hansen footage while I'm up there. I mean, I know he's dead, right? He's We covered him. Take pictures of his grave. Yeah, I'll do that. Spit on it. I'll, Suck I'll, on it. I'll do, some, <laughs> I'll do some... Put it in your mouth. Ask yeah. him if he likes it. You know what? I'm going to try that. Yeah. So if you're in Anchorage, first week of April, find me at some weird bar... And uh, yeah, let's hang out, or or not, that's fine too. You're I, gonna get killed. I, you know, <laughs> you're gonna get fucking murdered, man. I'm gonna go to Denali. I'm actually going to a state park. I'm going to Denali National Park while I'm up there. You lucky fuck. And I'm gonna be fucking wearing all ACG gear. You son of a <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Planting my flag. Anchorage uh, sounds like the way you describe a fat ass on a lady. Damn, that bitch got some Anchorage. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling that's going to be on Urban Dictionary by the end of this year. <laughs> yes, you did it, bro. Yeah, that's great. But yeah, please support us by joining the Patreon. It's patreon.com slash little stinkers. All right. Love you guys. and Thank you for making this fun. See you next time. See Bye, you. everybody. Bye.